Hi there, I'm Patsy Thompson and Ernie and I have been playing around in the sewing room again and I'd like to take you through a tutorial on how to use a new product that I've been having a lot of fun with. It's called Texture Magic and it's a product that allows you to texturize any fabric of any type. In other words, it's going to let you create a three-dimensional facet to your fabric. Let's take a look at some. When you first open up your package of Texture Magic and see that it's really just an ugly piece of synthetic fabric, you'll probably be wondering about what the fuss is all about. I mean, just what is this stuff for anyway? It's all about what happens when you combine Texture Magic with steam. When you mix the two together, the Texture Magic will shrink in all directions by 30%. <laughs> yes, that's right. It will shrink in size by 30%. And if we can attach a piece of fabric to that texture magic, then the fabric will go along for the ride and it will also shrink by 30%. That's where the magic happens and the fun begins. The first thing you'll need to do is attach a piece of texture magic to the fabric you want to texturize. You can do this by pin basting or spray basting, and I'm doing it here by spray basting with 505 Basting Spray. Now remember to cut both the Texture Magic and your fabric larger than what you'll need later on, because both of them will shrink. Here, I'm using a stippling stitch to permanently attach the Texture Magic to my fabric. You can also use straight line quilting in this step, and I'll show you how that looks later on. Also notice that I did not need to add any form of stabilizer. This is really just the texture magic and a piece of fabric. Once I'm done stitching these two pieces together, I'm ready to expose them to steam so it's off to the ironing board. Lay your project so the Texture Magic side is facing up because that's the side that will shrink when exposed to steam. I put my steam iron on the highest steam setting and then I let the magic happen. You can see the project start to shrink as you see the sides kind of curl up. Now you don't want to actually touch your iron to the Texture Magic because it may cause the Texture Magic to stiffen and that's not the goal here. Sometimes those sides curling up can kind of get into your way and make it difficult to expose the center fabric to steam. Here's what I do for that situation. I pin the edges of my piece into a piece of styrofoam and in this way they can't curl up and get in my way as I'm trying to steam the centermost part of the piece. This way, I can be certain that I've adequately steamed the entire piece and any shrinking that's going to happen has happened. You can also tell this piece is finished because there's no more movement and except for those curly edges, it lays flat. Okay, so I've got a nice piece of texturized fabric and I'm ready to use it in some applique. I want a small piece that will be the center of a flower, so I trace a circle that is the same circle I used when I made my flower template for these blocks. Now one thing that will happen when you cut into fabric that's been texturized is that you will open up the stitching lines that cause this puckering along the perimeter of whatever you're cutting into. Because I want to make sure that my applique piece is nice and puckered along the edge just like it is everywhere else, I'm placing one line of stitching just outside my traced line. The way I'll be using Texture Magic in this first type of applique, I need to cut my piece a bit larger than the final flower center anyway, so this will work out just great. Once I've stitched the whole circle circumference, I just cut my piece out just outside that stitched line, and now my applique piece is ready to be used. I've already fused the rest of my applique flower together using Wonder Under Fusible Web. Now using a Teflon pressing sheet as my ironing surface, my goal is to trap my texturized flower center underneath the rest of the flower, and I can easily do this because the rest of my flower has fusible web on its underside. Normally, when I fuse, I just carefully lay my iron on the area to be fused but don't do that in this application. 
I've gone to some trouble to create this wonderful three-dimensional fabric for the center, and if I just lay my iron down on it, some of my texturization will be lost because everything will just be flattened. Instead, I carefully place my iron tip all along the edges of the flower center, and in this way, I can preserve that wonderful three-dimensional effect. Once the entire perimeter of the flower center has been fused, I wait for my applique pressing sheet to cool off, and then I gently peel the flower off. It's now ready to be placed wherever I wish for the final fusing in place. I place it in the center of my quilt block, and then I simply fuse it in place. Again, I'm deliberately avoiding placing my iron directly onto that center because it's just plain too cool to risk flattening it. Just like I would finish the edges of any fusible applique, I want to finish the raw edges that abut my texturized center. Now because the area I'm stitching on is all fusible web or texturized, I do not need to place any stabilizer underneath this block before I start working. Here, I'm finishing the edge with a dense zigzag stitch, but I'm doing this in free motion mode. Now of course, you could use any finishing stitch you wanted, and you don't need to do this in free motion mode, but I'm doing it this way here, partly because I want you to know that you can mess around with your program stitches in free motion mode, and also partly because I really like the kind of jagged edge this will lend to my flower center. Once the center edges are finished, I just finished the edges of the two outer petal zones. Of course, you can use whatever kind of finishing design you want to use here, and I'm using the EKG finishing design for these petal zones. Once you finish the edges of both petal areas, you've got a cute block that's about a million times more interesting because you've texturized that center, but let me show you a quick and dirty way to really add some additional interest to a block just by doing some free motion machine embroidery on that block. Remember, this whole flower was made using fusible web, so we don't need to add any stabilizer to the back because the fusible web will act as our stabilizer. What I'm doing here is free motion machine embroidery. It's just like what you do with free motion quilting, except there's no batting. I'm using the nice shape of this purple applique piece to guide me in coming up with a free motion design that will enhance the shape of the block and will also add a lot of interest to a very simple block. I'm working freehand here, but know that you could just draw out a design just like this and then follow the lines. When I move to the outer petal zone, I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm trying to come up with a design that plays off the shape of this zone. Also notice that when doing free motion embroidery, you'll want to pick a thread color that will show, because that's the point of adding this kind of detail. Solid color trilobal polyester threads and solid color rayon threads work great for this kind of work, because they each have a wonderful sheen that will help draw the viewer's eye. Once this area has been decorated, my block is ready to be pieced into that final quilt. Know that working in this way, that is getting all the detailed thread work done when you're only working with one block at a time, is much easier because there is no bulky quilt to fit into your tiny throat space. And here you see these same blocks in the final quilt, which is only partly quilted. Notice that by stitching just outside each zone of the flower with polyester monofilament thread, we've achieved a bit of prominence to our flower, and this was all done without trapunto. The texture magic center is three-dimensional, and that's what really catches the viewer's eye and makes the block unique, but we've added some cool thread work through free motion machine embroidery that also adds some interest. Now let's get back to work, and I'll show you some other ways to use texture magic. Thank you.